Weeks out from the U.S. presidential election, and Americans have been handed a political grenade as details emerge of how the son of presidential hopeful Joe Biden may have used his father's position in the White House to amass wealth and power while working at a corrupt Ukrainian energy company, Burisma. Hunter Biden stands accused of using his influence in the Obama administration to interfere in the execution of policy and using his connection to the White House for personal and financial gain. The allegations are detailed in an 87-page Senate report probing the Bidens, which warns the family's financial transactions with Ukrainian, Russian and Chinese nationals raises criminal concerns and risks of extortion threats. And Joe Biden? Well, he stands accused of leveraging $1 billion in foreign aid to get the Ukrainian prosecutor investigating his son's company fired. This special investigation will walk you through the report in detail and break down how the world's biggest tech billionaires wanted to bury the story on their social media platforms in the lead up to the US election. But first, what is the report and who published it? Well, the Senate Committee on Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs published a report titled Hunter Biden, Burisma and Corruption, the impact on US government policy and related concerns. The document examines possible conflicts of interest in foreign business while Joe Biden was Vice President in Barack Obama's administration. They discovered the Obama administration knew Hunter Biden's presence on the board of the corrupt Ukrainian energy company, Burisma, was, quote, problematic and, quote, interfered in the execution of policy with Ukraine. And the investigation has illustrated the extent to which officials within the Obama administration ignored the glaring warning signs when the vice president's son joined the board of a company owned by a corrupt Ukrainian oligarch. Now, Joe Biden was able to escape scrutiny for these allegations by denying any wrongdoing for a very long time. Mr. Vice President, how many times have you ever spoken to your son about his overseas business dealings? I've never spoken to my son about his overseas business dealings. And so how do you know? How do you know? Here's what I know. I know Trump deserves to be investigated. But that was until the New York Post stumbled across a missing laptop, which dragged the presidential candidate directly into the grips of a corruption scandal. In one email, an advisor to the board of Burisma thanked Hunter Biden for creating the opportunity to meet the then vice president. And other emails showed how Hunter Biden sought to use his father's influence to create business ties in China, a claim Biden had previously denied. What did you respond to the New York Post story about your son, sir? I know you'd ask it. I have no response. It's another smear campaign. Right up your alley. No other questions you always had. The allegations are extraordinary. So much so that social media giants Facebook and Twitter sought to censor the story to stop it reaching voters in a manner akin to brazen election interference. The media and the big tech are desperately trying to cover up this massive scandal. I'm not just running against Sleepy Joe Biden. I'm running against the corrupt media. They're corrupt. The corrupt media, the big tech giants, and I'm running against the Washington swamp. It's time to send a message to these wealthy liberal hypocrites by delivering Joe Biden a thundering defeat on November 3rd. Everything is going on here about Russia is wanting to make sure that I do not get elected the next president of the United States because they know I know them and they know me. I don't understand why this president is unwilling to take on Putin when he's actually paying bounties to kill American soldiers in Afghanistan, when he's engaged in activities that are trying to destabilize all of NATO. I don't know why he doesn't do it, but it's worth asking the question, why isn't that being done? Any country that interferes with us will, in fact, pay a price because they're affecting our sovereignty. So how did we get here? A fresh corruption scandal and allegations of election interference weeks out from the 2020 US election. To explore the tale of Hunter Biden's pursuit for wealth and power, we have to start in Eastern Europe, more than six years ago. Welcome to Kiev, the capital city of Ukraine, a city embroiled in a series of bloody mass protests, which would eventually boil over to a full-blown revolution, the revolution of dignity. 
In late February 2014, the country's parliament voted to oust its pro-Russian president in the Ukrainian revolution after his forces unleashed gunfire, killing dozens of protesters after months-long protests in the city. Those protesters were demanding integration into Western economies and an end to systemic corruption. The president fled to Russia in the wake of the bloodbath and the Kremlin annexed Crimea. And Ukrainian billionaire and former foreign minister Petro Poroshenko was elected president. He promised to break away from Russia corruption and two months later, Hunter Biden enters the story. The modern day Senate investigation discovered Burisma sent two wires worth more than $112,000 to Rosemont Senecare Bahia, a shell entity run by Hunter Biden's business associate, Devin Archer. Yeah, now, now the convicted felon that, uh, yes, his business partner. The investigation found, quote, the earliest payment from Burisma related to Hunt and Biden appears to have been made to a Washington law firm where the vice president's son was employed as a counsel in 2014. On May 7, 2014, just weeks after vice president Biden took lead of the Obama administration's Ukraine policy, Burisma sent the Washington law firm a payment of $250,000. One week later, on May 12, 2014, Hunter Biden joined Archer on Brisma's board of directors. Over the next course of several years, Hunter Biden and Devin Archer were paid millions of dollars from a corrupt Ukrainian oligarch for their participation on the board. Hunter Biden himself was personally paid between $50,000 and $83,000 each month to serve on the board of Burisma while his father was the public face of Obama's administration's Ukraine policy. This was a gig Hunter appeared to be seriously underqualified for. True or false, Hunter went on GMA and said he had no experience in oil, gas, energy, or Ukraine. True. That's true, that, that, correct? That is correct, yep. The Senate report also found that Ukrainian political figures were desperate for U.S. support. It said Burisma would have made sure relevant Ukrainian officials were well aware of Hunter's appointment to Burisma's board as leverage. And Hunter Biden's position on the board created an immediate potential conflict of interest that would prove to be problematic for both US and Ukrainian officials and would affect the implementation of Ukraine policy. Hunter Biden may have been weaponized by Ukraine to influence his father's decisions as vice president on behalf of Burisma, or perhaps he sought to benefit financially from his father's son relationship. Hunter Biden, together with other Biden family mem members, profited off the Biden name. And that's what's happening here. And what we revealed in our 87-page report is a vast web of connections with Chinese nationals, but people all over the world, uh, again, trading on the Biden name. But it's these, it's these business dealings. Uh, you know, our, our report raises far more questions than it actually answered, but it raises so many troubling issues that the mainstream media is simply not looking at. They're suppressing the information, which is a scandal in and of itself. This is the same garbage Rudy Giuliani, Trump's henchman. It's a last ditch effort in this desperate campaign to smear me and my family. And the vast majority of the intelligence people have come out and said there's no basis at all. By 2015, two bureaucrats raised concerns about Hunter Biden's job with Burisma. Early in the year, George Kent, the former acting deputy chief of mission at the U.S. Embassy in Kiev, told the officials of Vice President Biden's office about the negative optics of his son's role on Burisma's board. In February 2015, I raised my concern that Hunter Biden's status as a board member could create the perception of a conflict of interest, George Kent told the committees. I said that I had learned that Hunter Biden had been appointed to the board of this company, that I had just raised US concerns about the owner of the company, who we believed had been engaged in money laundering. I thought that someone needed to talk to Hunter Biden and he should step down from the board of Burisma. What is clear from the records is that the State Department officials, particularly Kent himself, regularly considered how Hunter Biden's connection to Burisma might affect the execution of US policy. Now, a few months later, according to bombshell emails found this year on a forgotten laptop, Hunter Biden introduced his father, who was vice president at the time, to a top executive at Burisma. This meeting in Washington, D.C. took place a year before Joe Biden pressured Ukraine to fire its top prosecutor during an active investigation into Burisma and its owner. Biden's campaign has said there is no official record of the meeting, but the emails say otherwise. An advisor to the Burisma board thanked Hunter for the, quote, opportunity 
to meet his father in an email sent on April 17 in 2015. The messages were found on the hard drive of a laptop that the son dropped off and never picked up. And they were then handed to the New York Post by Rudy Giuliani, President Donald Trump's attorney. Thanks to the New York Post, thanks to some emails that we obtained from Hunter Biden's laptop computer that he dropped off at a Delaware Mac repair shop last April and then didn't pick up again. He basically abandoned that laptop after it was fixed and left the Mac repair guy with an $85 bill. Um, we find out from the emails and the photographs that we have now uh, managed to get from the hard drive from this computer that, in fact, there is a lot of evidence that links Joe Biden to his son Hunter Biden and the company Burisma. Not only the Biden campaign has not come out and, and refuted any of the emails, not one. People on the email chain has come out and said, those are actual emails. I'm, I'm, it's to me, and this actually happened, and that's fact. Okay? So we know that. In addition, we haven't released what we've talked about. Hunter Biden's lawyer has come to us both with phone calls and with emails saying, hey, I got to get the... Uh, I've got to get the hard drive back. So you've got the emails from Hunter Biden's lawyer saying, can we have that hard drive back? What, what date are those emails? It's, it's, it's basically, I think it's Thursdays, the day that we were coming out with the first story in the New York Post. It might have been Wednesday. So it's the night before we came out with the first story. I think because the New York Post went to them for comment and said, hey, we've got these emails. And they saw the emails and they, and they went, oh, my God, look what they've got. They, they have the real emails of us setting up these deals. They panicked. And when he panicked, what he did is started the call. I'm sure that Hunter, you know, the Biden campaign lit, I'm sure they lit Hunter up. Like, what happened here? How did these guys get your hard drive, get your computer? And, and, and this is when the lawyer started calling around, and this is when he sent the emails. We just kind of sat on it because said, we want him to go more into the Russia thing. We, we want the mainstream media because it just brings out what liars they are. We have the emails from the lawyer. If we need to release them, we'll release them. Does this lead to the suggestion, do you think, that Biden may have corruptly used American foreign policy uh, as leverage to enrich his family? I mean, I mean, that's the accusation that's emerged this week. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Remember, if for an American audience, Joe Biden has been adamant on the, on the Burisma in the Ukraine. He did nothing. He never talked to his son. He didn't know anything about it. The stunning thing about these emails, and then actually the Biden camp admitting something, this is very important. The thing is that about these emails is that Biden has, has basically said to the American people, I knew nothing about it. Now we actually see the meeting set up. At first, what they came and, and had the mainstream media spin is that there's nothing in his official records to show this. They've actually copped to the fact of, well, maybe he had a cup of coffee or maybe it was an informal meeting. So this is going to be, that sets the predicate that Joe Biden has lied consistently over the last couple of years to the American people. He lied on the debate stage with President Trump. What, what the Fox did, which was very interesting on that issue, but also on the Chinese, they actually went to the people on the emails and contacted them. What was so stunning is that they reported last night that one of the guys in the email said, absolutely, the meetings happened. This is not off of some Russia intelligence operation. That email's correct. The meeting's correct. And by the way, the 10% of the equity is Joe Biden. So you're starting to see other people come in here and validate this. It's pretty stunning. For the Australian audience, just remember one thing. Joe Biden for years has sat there categorically. My family has not participated in China or has any relationships with anything in China. That's all lies, all discredited. He has said the Burisma thing is all a lie. I don't know anything about it. He stood on a debate stage and spent three minutes fighting with President Trump and said it again. So the predicate's been set. Joe Biden's a liar, a stone cold liar. That, that's what these emails and this other information that's coming out right now show. Months later, in October 2015, another State Department official took his fears directly to Joe and Hunter Biden. The Senate investigation found he was concerned that, quote, Hunter Biden's position on Burisma's board enabled Russian disinformation efforts and risked undermining U.S. policy in Ukraine. The committees found that neither the office of the vice president nor the State Department ever took any action following these complaints. Former Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs Victoria Newland added weight to the concerns of George Kent in her testimony to the Senate committees. She told them confronting oligarchs such as the owner of Burisma would send anti-corruption shockwaves through Ukraine. But, as the investigation points out, in December 2015, Vice President Biden's staff 
advised him not to comment on names or individuals accused of corruption. In 2016, George Kent raised his concerns again, this time by email. The presence of Hunter Biden on the Brisbane board was very awkward for all US officials pushing an anti-corruption agenda in Ukraine. His email sent in September said, the Senate committee said they were only aware of two individuals who raised concerns about the Hunter Biden link in Ukraine to their superiors. Despite the efforts of these individuals, their concerns appear to have fallen on deaf ears, the investigation said. That same year, Ukraine's top prosecutor, Viktor Shokin, had an active investigation into Burisma and its owner, while Hunter Biden and Devin Archer sat on the company's board. Vice President Joe Biden threatened to withhold $1 billion in US loan guarantees if Ukraine's leaders did not dismiss Viktor Shokin, according to the Senate investigation. After that threat, Ukraine's parliament fired Viktor Shokin, a dismissal which took place in late March. Joe Biden's on tape bragging that he leveraged a billion tax dollars to get a prosecutor that was investigating Hunter Biden fired, uh, and son of a bee, they did it. True or false? That is true. I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid. Now, Joe Biden and his allies have maintained his intervention prompting the firing of Viktor Shokin was related to the corruption in the country and the prosecutor's office. Despite publishing 87 pages of background into the Biden family, the Senate report warned its investigation had been hampered by, quote, criminal investigations, impeachment proceedings, COVID-19, and several instances of obstructive behavior, leaving plenty of work left to do. The chairman's investigation has faced many obstacles from the minority and from the executive agencies that failed to comply with document requests. Accordingly, there remains much work to be done, the Senate investigation said. These documents show that Hunter Biden received millions of dollars from foreign sources as a result of business relationships that he built during the period when his father was vice president of the United States of America. The extent to which Hunter Biden's role in Brisbane's board affecting US policy towards Ukraine is not clear. This is a good government oversight investigation that relies on documents and testimonies from US agencies and officials, not a Russian disinformation campaign, as our Democratic colleagues have falsely stated. Now, the Democrats and Joe Biden have attempted to pass off the story as a smear campaign, even going as far to suggest it was coming from a Russian disinformation campaign. Does it surprise you at all that this information Rudy Giuliani is peddling uh, very well could be connected to some sort of Russian government disinformation campaign? Well, we know that this whole uh, smear on Joe Biden uh, comes from the Kremlin. Uh, that's been clear for well over a year now that they've been pushing this uh, false narrative about the vice president and his son. Uh, and, you know, the idea that the president, um, that the White House counsel and others were made aware that Giuliani was being used by Russian intelligence uh, and using Russian intelligence in the sense of meeting with an agent of the Kremlin and pushing out this Kremlin false narrative, the idea that they were knowing uh, and still on the floor of the Senate during the impeachment trial, uh, pushing this Kremlin narrative is pretty breathtaking. But I guess at this point, we can't be shocked by anything this administration does, no matter how craven. Uh, but clearly, the origins of this whole uh, smear uh, are from the Kremlin, and the president is only too happy to have Kremlin help in, in trying to amplify it. It's not like Rudy Giuliani is peddling this information in a vacuum, uh, Congressman. Take a look at this picture of the president in the old o Oval Office holding up a copy of the New York Post touting this conspiracy theory. Uh, it's made its way all the way to the commander in chief uh, with a big smile on his face. Yes. Uh, well, look, uh, I, I, you know, I think we know who the driving force behind this smear has been all along, and it's been uh, the president and the Kremlin. Uh, the Kremlin has an obvious interest uh, in denigrating Joe Biden. They want Donald Trump to win. They recognize he's a weak president. He's been utterly unwilling to stand up to Putin and other autocrats. Uh, he has diminished NATO. He has um, cr criticized and weakened our alliance uh, with our transatlantic partners. Uh, he's been the gift that doesn't stop giving for the Kremlin. So uh, clearly, they want to help him, uh, so they want to denigrate the vice president. The intelligence community has made that abundantly clear. 
Um, and this, this particular smear, though, uh, has also been acknowledged to come from the Kremlin. Uh, and there it is in the Oval Office, another wonderful propaganda coup for Vladimir Putin, seeing the President of the United States holding up a newspaper, promoting Kremlin propaganda. It's really incredible. Uh, have you, uh, as a member of the Gang of Eight, the top leadership in the uh, the Congress, the Senate, and the House, uh, and members of the Intelligence Committee. Have you been formally briefed on what the Russians are up to right now in trying to uh, peddle this kind of information? Well, I was uh, in the Intelligence Committee today to see what the latest was, and frankly, we haven't gotten much uh, from the intelligence community uh, very recently, which concerns me. Uh, they have, at times, some of the leadership, like the uh, director, Ratcliffe, not been very forthcoming uh, in terms of the intelligence on the Russian threat and been promoting this false equivalence with other countries. Uh, so, uh, you know, I wish I could uh, tell you more, Wolf. I wish the intelligence community was at liberty to tell the public more. But we do know this. Uh, the Russians are once again actively involved in trying to denigate, denigrate the vice president. But now... Both FBI and intelligence agencies have confirmed Russia is not responsible for the source of the allegations. And Joe Biden, he's gone to ground. You see more intelligence than anybody in the country other than the president of the United States. So you can tell us what's real and what's fake. Is this Russian disinformation, director? So, Maria, it's funny that uh, some of the people that complain the most about uh, intelligence being politicized are the ones politicizing intelligence and unfortunately in this case uh, it is Adam Schiff the chairman of the House Intelligence uh, Committee who uh, as you pointed out on Friday said that the intelligence community believes that Hunter Biden's laptop and the emails on it are, are part of some Russian disinformation campaign let me be clear the intelligence community doesn't believe that uh, because there's no intelligence that supports that. And we have shared no intelligence with Chairman Schiff or any other member of Congress that Hunter Biden's laptop is part of some Russian disinformation campaign. It's simply not true. And this is exactly what I said I would stop when I became the director of national intelligence. And that's people using the intelligence community to leverage some political narrative. And in this case, Apparently, Chairman Schiff w wants anything against his preferred political candidate to be deemed as not real and is using the intelligence community or attempting to use the intelligence community to say there's nothing to see here. Um, don't drag the intelligence community into this. Hunter Biden's laptop is not part of some Russian disinformation campaign, and I think it's clear that the American people know that. What are we supposed to do here, Adam Schiff, calling it Russia disinformation two weeks before an election so that people are under the impression that this is not real? So is Adam Schiff lying to the American people? This is an elected official. Yeah. So, Maria, what we do is we tell the truth. And, and, and my role uh, as the director of national intelligence is to not allow people to leverage the intelligence community for a political narrative that's not true. And in this case, um, Adam Schiff uh, saying that this is part of some Russian disinformation campaign and that the IC has assessed that or believes that is simply not true. So I appreciate the opportunity to be able to tell the American people that that's the case. And I'll continue to do that, whether it's Republicans or Democrats. If they try and leverage the intelligence community for political gain, I won't allow it. Hunter Biden is a U.S. person, and he would be subject to any investigation regarding fraud or corruption would be uh, rightfully uh, the jurisdiction of the FBI. So the FBI has had possession of this. What I can say, without commenting on any investigation that they may have into corruption or fraud, is to say that their investigation does not center around Russian disinformation, and the intelligence community is playing no role with respect to that. More disturbingly, the New York Post, which leaked the emails implicating Joe Biden, was censored by both Facebook and Twitter. Instead of waiting for proof the New York Post had fabricated the story, the social media companies sought to preempt a verdict. Their fact checkers ruled that because they could not verify the emails, the public had no right to see them. Social media giants, tech billionaires, dictating editorial policy at news organizations. It is nothing short of election interference. They are coming for the biggest guys world, and they just shut it down, and they're in your face about it. I have said that unless we break social media's hold on this today, over this weekend and early next week, the president's never going to get a fair election.
They're, they're going to take down everything that says the president wins. They're going to take down everything that says the president's leading. Uh, Jack Dorsey, Zuckerberg, and the guys at Google, to me, the, the, the Justice Department should go in and shut it down on Monday. If they don't shut it down, throw them in jail. This, this is, they, they, are, they have taken free, these oligarchs in Silicon Valley are out of control. We don't have free speech in this country. They took down the White House press secretary the other day. They went right to the White House and took down the commander in chief of the, of the armed forces of the United States because they deemed behind the screen that something was inaccurate. And what they said about being accurate is a stone cold lie. They said it was hack, it was hack material. Nobody says it's hack material. This comes off a hard drive. It's absolutely absurd. The Biden campaign has an argument it's hacked. The lawyer for uh, for Hunter Biden has said it's hacked. We can show you the, in fact, the FBI and the smart people at 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 uh, at, uh, at uh, the New York Post that work for Murdoch have it. It's not hacked. That's that's just a lie. And yet they took it down. This is a crisis because this shows the power they have to basically shut down conversation. At the time of recording this investigation, the Post Twitter account was still banned by Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey. Even though Facebook and Twitter tried to silence the story, the journalists at the Post have refused to stop digging. They've uncovered photos of Biden meeting with his son's colleagues, even damning photos of Hunter with a drug utensil sticking out of his mouth, demonstrating the man's issues with substance abuse. With mere weeks to go in the race to the White House, we can only hope that sanity prevails and journalists are allowed to fearlessly and freely cover this sordid and disturbing corruption scandal. Bernie Sanders would have been the Democratic nominee if any of this information had come out. And by the way, there's much more horrible information. There's really horrible information that's about to come out. But if any of this information had come out at the time, Joe Biden had been finished in the Democratic primary, finished. 